May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Please be seated. Please be comfortable. A week ago Saturday, I was excited to offer a sermon on the third Sunday of Easter. The scripture for today is beautiful and filled with hope and promise, creation and resurrection. Last Saturday, I was rereading the gospel and I was getting a little cocky, thinking, I got this. Then Sunday afternoon happened in Minnesota, my home. Another young man of color shot dead. And now I get to stand up here in all my clergy finery, a white woman in the pulpit of God, pretending to have it all together with an air of understanding given to those in the pulpit. Well, it ain't so. I do not got it all together, and I have spent all week lamenting having to be up here at all. Our lessons this morning ring out. See? See what love the Father has given us? That we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. We are all children of God, the God of Abraham, the God of our ancestors. That's right. We are all children of God made from the same stardust that slowly bubbled and brewed into a cacophony of bits and pieces that we now put into an orderly fashion and call it the periodic elements table because we like order. Elements from the creator that offered up our ancestors on a land that we now call the continent of Africa. Now, I am a first-generation American citizen on my father's side, second-generation American citizen on my mother's side. My ancestors have not been on this land for very long. As ancestors of Abraham, my, tra my people traveled over countries northward, making their final homes in what we now call England and Norway, before arriving on this continent. As they traveled northward, the need for melanin in their skin to protect them from the sun diminished over generations. I have much whiter skin than my ancestors from generations past, but I come from the same elements, the same ancestors as the young man who was shot and killed on Sunday. Somewhere on our intricate and insanely complicated strand of DNA, he and I are related. But somewhere, someone decided some people were more worthy of respect and dignity of life than others. A ignorance of our oneness an ignorance of our creation. When Jesus stood before the disciples and companions in a room in Jerusalem, they were ignorant as well of who was before them. They were unable to recognize the holiness of that which was before them. They could not see with their heart. They could only see with their eyes. And what they saw was the spirit, humanity, earth, and heaven together. Yet, could it not be seen together as one? It was not possible. For too long, we as a people have had our eyes closed. The disciples had closed eyes as well, yet Jesus was able to show them his divinity, his true purpose. 
Thus it is written in Luke chapter 24, verse 46. Thus it is written, the Messiah is to suffer and then to rise from the dead. Christ was the resurrected life. And the disciples were given the opportunity to witness creation and holiness. We, as a people in Minnesota, have the opportunity right now to open our eyes. Open our eyes to the holiness that is within every child of God on this planet, every child of God in this state. But if we really, truly do that, we will have to wrestle with our history, our ancestors, our demons, our interpretations of right and wrong, and the racism we as a people have perpetuated. And this wrestling match is especially important to us as Episcopalians. We, as a Christian denomination in these United States, have benefited from structural racism for generations. For centuries, we were the church of the slaveholder. We were the church of the politician, the owner and managing class. Our church buildings were built on the backs of slaves and underpaid free men. The time has come to make amends, to outwardly reconcile with God and our neighbor. Or as our gospel reminds us, repentance and forgiveness of sin is to be proclaimed. Repentance, we must. Reparation, we must. Reparation means repair. And repair, we must do. But reparations are not quick and easy tasks. We need to dismantle structures and institutions specifically built to benefit white people, break down the old ways that control or eliminate black, brown, native, First Nation culture, families, minds, and spirits. I'm talking about the church. I'm talking about our cities, our towns, and our state. We must all work together to break these centuries and centuries old pattern, destructive cycles. Generation after generation after generation of segregation, elitism, profiling, inequity, and classism. We, the people, can choose repentance over denial. We, the people, can choose restoration over retaliation. Jesus' victory over death was through death. Jesus' victory was creation and holiness newness of life and repentance. Repentance over denial. Our opening acclamation this morning, do we just say it or do we actually believe it? Christ is risen. There is one body and one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Do we just say it and then walk away? Let's review our baptismal covenant. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching, fellowship, and breaking of the bread? Heck, that one's easy. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and if you sin, will you repent? That one's a little more difficult. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of Christ? Not so easy. 
Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all nations and all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Can we? Can we really love and respect our neighbor with the same fierceness as we would for another blood relative who lives in our home or whom we would have over for Christmas dinner? Remember, we all come from the same ancestors, the same stardust. Our faith calls us to radically disrupt our status quo if we really believe what we promise whenever we recall our baptismal covenant. Reconcile reconciliation cannot occur without repentance. Repentance cannot move forward without reparations. Reparations is to repair. We are witnesses. We are witnesses to what is happening in our neighborhoods, our towns, our state. We are also witnesses, just like the disciples of old who stood in that room in awe and wonder at the union of spirit humanity, heaven, and earth. We are witnesses to creation and holiness. I know I'm repeating myself, but we are witnesses to the resurrected life of Christ revealed to us through creation, through everything and everyone who is filled with the same divinity and the same holiness. Resurrection is the grace that offers unconditional love. Resurrection is the grace that offers unconditional forgiveness. Resurrection is the grace that offers unconditional love. Our task is to live it. Our task is to believe it. Our task is to be it. I am an American citizen by birth. My cultural upbringing is English and Norwegian. I am a Christian by baptism and an Episcopalian by choice. I do not base my politics on a uniquely Anglo-Saxon tradition even though I am white and my ancestors are historically from that region. I strive daily to learn, to listen, and to feel. I strive daily, attempting to radically, unapologetically live my life as a member of Minnesota's beloved community, a witness to grace, creation, and holiness. I struggle daily. I fail. I get uncomfortable. I stand up and I try again. My children have lived within that model and continue to do the same as adults with the same goal to radically, unapologetically live and witness God's unconditional love in all people. May it be so. May it be so that each new generation remembers our ancestry and that we repair it together. Peace be with you. <laughs>